Hello, uh, today we shall see the combing mechanism and uh, let us see the animation of the comber. The measured lap that has been fed out and held fast. The fibers that are not held fast are removed by the half lap and collected as waste. These short fibers may be recycled and used elsewhere in a less critical yarn. So today we shall see the nipper assembly. That is, this is the bottom nipper and this is the top nipper. We shall see in detail how this works. And this is the feed roller. As you can see the red, uh, whatever shading is shown here, that is the lap which is being fed to the comber. And this is the cylinder. So with this background, let us see. The measured see. lap that has been fed out and held fast. The fibers that are not held fast are removed by the half lap and collected as waste. These short fibers may be recycled and used elsewhere in a less critical yarn. So, uh, having seen the animation, let us go to the next um, the passage. So, what we see here is the lap. The lap um, is resting on two lap rollers, which is marked over here as three. And the lap is unrolled. Here another lap is shown which is the reserve lap. The lap which is running, um, it, on its way it goes to the nipper. It passes over the eccentric shaft. This is the eccentric shaft over which it passes. This acts as a diverter. This serves to keep the web tension constant during the forward and return movements of the nipper. So this particular eccentric shaft will help maintain the tension in the web. Forward movement of the web into the nipper is performed by the feed roller which is marked as 5A. So the web passes over this eccentric shaft and goes through the below the feed roller. And it is um, uh, the, the web is given out in small amounts uh, to around maybe 5 mm. And when the feed roller has completed um, completed uh, feeding, then the nippers uh, shall be closed by the uh, spring 8, which is shown here. This particular spring will close the nippers. This is the top nipper, which is shown here. And this is the bottom nipper. So this particular nipper will close due to the pressure of this particular spring 8. And... Um, when the, this entire nipper assembly is um, returning due to the oscillation of the um, nipper shaft, the nipped web is presented to the cylinder. So there is a forward and backward motion to the nipper assembly as we have seen and this is given by the nipper shaft over here and because of this, this um, cylinder um, with, with the combing segment which is shown here. This is the combing segment. It is able to comb the uh, fringe. Um, the nippers will swing forward after this particular combing, the first combing that is there, and will um, give uh, when as it is moving forward, it will uh, transfer the web to the pairs of detaching rollers that are shown here, the four of them, and after this. Um, since the trailing end of the web has not been yet combed by the cylinder which is shown over here so therefore a top comb um, is takes an entry into the fringe and the combing of the trailing fringe is carried out so this completes the combing operation the web that is created by piecing at the detaching roller is now passed on to the web plate which is shown here this is the web plate it is passed on to the web plate and then to the lead of these are the lead of rollers and then it goes through a trumpet and then it forms a slicer after this it goes to the table rollers which is shown here table rollers and they will guide the sliver uh, that is formed to the table on which all the eight slivers now this was one head which is shown similarly there are eight heads and all the slivers coming out are combined 
and delivered together into the drafting arrangement after the material that has been uh, drafted in this manner it gives you a single sliver and this particular single sliver will be coiled into the cap this is the cap and there is also a brush shaft which is shown here which um, helps in keeping the cylinder comb clean so that every cycle as it is combing whatever material gets collected on the cylinder is being removed by the brush shaft so having seen this particular passage of the comber let us um, go into the details of it so first let us um, understand what this eccentric shaft is we have already seen that this lab when it opens out the material goes over this eccentric shaft and then further it goes below the feed roller for uh, combing so how does this eccentric shaft actually work when you see the eccentric shaft you can see that the uh, axis of a rotation is not the same as its um, axis of this particular uh, shaft that is there so when this particular shaft moves it will move in an eccentric manner when it will rotate so the lap sheet is unrolled from the lap rollers that are driven at a constant speed now this lap will be running at a constant speed and the lap sheet is unrolled the eccentric shaft which is partially rotated that means this particular shaft is partially rotated and it is intermittently uh, rotated in the forward and the backward direction and this particular shaft is fitted between the lap roller and the feed roller as we can see so the passage is like from the lap it a uh, lap it goes over the eccentric shaft and then below the feed roller so it is coming in between the lap and the feed roller so what is the function of this eccentric shaft since the lap rollers do not move from its position during the forward and backward motion of the nipper assembly false draft may be generated since this lap is um, although it is rotating but it is rotating at a fixed place and but at the same time the other end of the lap which is going below the feed roller this entire it is a nipper assembly which moves forward and backward and because of the difference in distance which is created because of this forward and backward motion uh, there might be some amount of false draft which might be generated over here in the web some amount of tension that is generated so this back and forth motion of the eccentric shaft compensates the change in the distance and therefore ensures uniform tension on the web or the sheet of the lap so the movement of this particular um, eccentric shaft will uh, compensate for the differences in tension during the forward and backward movement of the nipper assembly so with this um, let us see the construction of the nipper assembly so the nipper uh, suspension the way it is suspended let us have a look at it in this diagram this uh, this is the cylinder this is your top nipper this is the bottom nipper this is the feed roller and this is the spring the, and the top nipper is fulcrumed over at this uh, point a upper nipper is pivoted pivoted at a two springs on both sides of the plate generate the required pressure during nipper closing for a firm grip so this particular springs that are there on both the sides it will be there on both the sides of this um, top nipper and they will ensure that you are um, uh, generating an equal pressure on both the sides to for a firm grip of the nipper the nipper assembly design is very important since it adds to the cost why it adds to the cost is the reason being that the assembly is accelerated and deaccelerated almost 8 times per second on the modern combers and therefore they must be light in weight so since there is a lot of movement and uh, the nipper assembly generally would be heavy because of the uh, top nipper bottom nipper the feed roller which it carries uh, in the forward and the backward motion so it is necessary that this entire assembly is light they are therefore made up of aluminum alloy since the nippers must also uh, grip heavy lap sheets to the um, extent of maybe 80 kilotex and the grip must be firm and even so the nipper plates are made up of steel so let us look at the nipper bite the nipper bite has a special form as shown in this particular figure this is the shape of the nipper bite from where the lap uh, comes out and is um, given for 
come in by the cylinder. So the nose end, that is the design of this nose end is such that it firmly presses the fiber print downwards. So as you can see, the lap which is coming from here would be forced to um, be or rather it will be facing downwards and it will be pressed downwards so that the fibers do not escape the action of the cylinder. On old combers, since the distance between the feed roller and the nipper mouth, that is the feed roller would be somewhere over here, the distance between the feed roller and the nipper mouth was very high, leading to uncontrolled fiber extraction during combing and detaching. And um, therefore, we have we see over here, this is the new uh, way, the feed roller, the distance has been reduced. Um, in a Ritter um, um, E65 comber, the feed roller was shifted closer to the nipper mouth, as you can see, and a special guide plate 1, that is this guide plate 1, which is introduced at the feed roller, resulting in an improved guide uh, web guidance and a considerable saving in good fibers going into the noil. So this particular guide would uh, save a lot of fibers from going into the noil. So having seen this, let us have a look at the nipper movement. So let us first look at the various parts that are involved. So this is a nipper shaft. Um, this would be the swing arms. And this is the rotatable point at which this particular, um, this arm rotates or oscillates. And as you can see, there is, uh, there is a lever here on which the top nipper is mounted. This is the bottom nipper. And there is a pivot lever here, which is mounted on the cylinder axis. So let us see the lower nipper plate is supported at the front by two pivot levers on both sides on the cylinder. And this is a cylinder axis. On both the sides they are supported by these two levers. Um, it is supported by two swing arms. So at the same time, it is on the other side, it is supported by two swing arms on the nipper shaft, which is rotatable at this particular point as shown in the figure. In one, combing cycle that is once once in one single combing cycle of uh, one tuft the nipper assembly moves forward and backward about the rotatable point by the swing arms so when the swing arm oscillates this particular nipper assembly will move forward and backward so to show this um, by a line diagram this is how it moves so these are the levers that are involved and since this particular nipper shaft oscillates so this entire assembly would be moving forward and backward. Top nipper movement. So this is the nipper suspension. The upper nipper is supported on the lower nipper at A. So this is the bottom nipper on which the top nipper is suspended at A. Uh, it is also marked as 10 over here because there is one more diagram which will be superimposed on this and the suspended shaft 12 so this top nipper is um, actually it is suspended by the shaft 12 which which is which is over here by a spring 8 which is marked in this particular diagram in the next diagram which will be superimposed on this it is marked as 11 so this is how it will look so this is your um, top nipper and as this oscillates this is how the top nipper will is shown in an open position and as this oscillates on the other side you can see that the top nipper has come down and closed so these are the two positions extreme positions where the top nipper uh, the nippers are open and the nippers are closed so because of this levers um, this happens this is able to um, like open and close due to the movement of the um, entire assembly in the forward and the backward direction. So when the nipper assembly is moving forward, you can see that the nipper has nippers have opened and when it will be moving backwards in this direction, the nippers will be closed. So as the nipper assembly moves forward, the nippers are open due to the lever mechanism. As the nippers move backward, the nippers close due to spring pressure. So there is a spring um, here which is by which the top nipper is suspended. And because of the spring pressure, 
it would be closed. Nippers move close to the detaching rollers, which is known as the detachment surface. When it is moving forward, this particular um, nipper assembly would move very, very close to the detaching roller nip, and the distance that uh, is the, would remain between the detaching roller nip and the nipper uh, grip would be called as the detachment setting. The gentle closure of the nippers that is uh, nipper closure must not be sudden and sharp and the pressure applied must increase gradually it should not be a sudden thing that the nippers have suddenly closed or there's a sharp uh, closure of the nippers the closure should always be a gentle one and therefore um, this gentle closure of nipper is ensured by uh, the eccentric that is 12 marked over here in the diagram when the spring is compressed and released continuously due to the rotation of the eccentric so the rotation of the eccentric um, allows um, gentle closure and opening of the uh, nippers um, as the spring is compressed and released by the eccentric. So now let us see uh, there are two types of suspension um, types um, ha hanging and standing for the nipper assembly. So let us try and understand what these two types are. So this is the hanging pendulum where uh, you can see um, this is your uh, nipper assembly which would move in this direction. These are the swinging nippers and this is your cylinder. In case of hanging pendulum, the nipper assembly is hanging on a pivot above the top nipper plate for a forward and backward movement to the nipper assembly. So the forward and backward movement, the pivot is at the top. It is above the top nipper. And so the swinging would look like this. This is the swinging movement. The nippers would be moving forward and backward, suspended from the top. Now when you come to the standing kind of pendulum assembly or the arrangement, we see that uh, it is. Uh, this is the axis around which this entire nipper assembly moves. So the nipper assembly is arranged on a crank below the bottom nipper. This is the bottom nipper below this it is uh, placed the assembly um, is arranged on the crank below this and for the forward and backward movement of the nipper assembly so when you now look at the nipper assembly the movement it would be something like this from below so this this is an innovation which is done by traders there's a change from the earlier uh, arrangement of the movement of nipper assembly it has changed in this manner so let us uh, look at the advantage or the influence of such a movement on comber performance or combing performance. Um, this is the one which is done uh, innovation by Ritter and this is on, on some other older comber. So the type of arrangement used for the movement of the nipper assembly has a major influence of the combing per on the combing performance. With the standing pendulum, the bat moves concentrically with the cylinder comb now or which is also called as a half lap so the bat moves in a concentric manner around the cylinder the distances of the fiber web to the cylinder and the various positions of the nipper assembly movement do not show much difference so if you see the distance that is there between the fiber which has to be combed and the teeth on the cylinder the distance is almost constant throughout so there is not much variation here but when you see in case of a hanging pendulum the uh, movement is in this this manner in this direction and what you see is the differences in the distance between the fiber web and the cylinder show a large variation between the highest and the lowest point of contact so we can see that the distance between um, the fiber and the teeth of the cylinder would be much less here as compared to the extremes at both the sides. So this side it would be the distance is too high. So there is a lot of variation in the distance between the fiber along the movement. So which is a very unfavorable um, condition for combing performance. So with this um, understanding of the nipper assembly and the way it moves. Um, we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will see how the other parts of the comber are um, 
driven and uh, one by one we will complete the entire uh, mechanism of cumber drive.